In fact, there are places I go uh, in the city of Raleigh and I pull up my laptop and I dial up simply like Bovada, which is an offshore um, sports wagering site. And you can't. Not allowed. Why? Because it's illegal in the state of North Carolina. Can't bet. I can't even get that website some places. I can get it here. Uh, so some places block certain websites. Anyway, maybe that's all going to change. Brian Murphy, investigative reporter, WRAL, joins us with the latest, I guess. Uh, so are the are the good folks in the state ledge going to give us an opportunity to wager on sports by football season? It, it sure sounds like it. Uh, the, the bill passed the Senate, and now the House is pretty confident they, they've got the votes to pass it, and Governor Cooper says he'll, he'll sign it. Are there any – look, I keep using the word guardrails when it comes to college sports, and I hate guardrails. Are there any things in the bill that would, like, not just open up all forms of sports wagering? I mean, we're talking about single game. Are we talking about parlays and everything like that as well? Yeah. Uh, you know, the state of Virginia doesn't allow you to bet, and the state of New Jersey don't allow you to bet on, on college teams in the state, so you can't bet on Virginia Tech or, or UVA. If you're in Virginia, the North Carolina bill doesn't have any restrictions. You'd be able to to bet on North Carolina. You'd be able to single game parlay it, uh, futures, you name it. Uh, all of it would be legal under under the current bill. Do we know why it's taken this long, Brian? Um, not not really. <laughs> I haven't gotten a great answer to that question. I think some of it is priorities. Uh, you know, last year there was a lot of a lot of work on the budget, a lot of work on on a big energy bill that passed. Right. Obviously, re- redistricting. Um, they're supposed to be a part time legislature, although they seem to meet all the time. Um, so I think just bandwidth uh, wise, and then I also think it, it took a lot of time to bring people on board. Um, you know, it's a, a fairly culturally conservative state. Yeah. Um, and so it takes some time, I think, for the supporters of the bill to kind of work on their colleagues and, and show them, hey, this is happening in Virginia. It's happening in Tennessee. It's happening all over the country. Uh, we need to get a piece of this. So who are the people? But I guess you don't have to give us names unless you really want to. <laughs> who are against allowing citizens of North Carolina to do what citizens of more than at least half the United States are able to do today anyway. Yeah, I think uh, it's an odd coalition. Um, it's kind of the most conservative members of the legislature and the most liberal members of the legislature. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the, pa- the bill passed in the state Senate, but it passed with more uh, Republicans voting against it than, than voting for it, which is a little bit odd in a, in a GOP-controlled uh, chamber. But I, I think you, you, the argument you hear from the most conservative members is, you know, gambling. It's, oh, yes. you know, it destroys families. It, it leads to debt. It leads to lots of issues. And then you'll hear a, a similar but different argument on, on the far left or, or the most progressive members of the legislature who say, um, this takes advantage of, of the least among us. And uh, it's a giveaway to, to giant corporations um, who will now be able to, you know, use North Carolina citizens as their customers to make even more money. So um, uh, it'll have to get passed, I think, by, by people sort of in the center of both mm-hmm. parties. Uh, do, do they know what the lottery and uh, church bingo is? Do they do, are they aware of that? And and there that was a huge <laughs> huge fight in North Carolina to get that, right. and uh, and there are still people who are, who are very angry that North Carolina has the lottery. So um, bringing that up isn't as <laughs> is it a, a winner that you would think it would be. It's I mean seriously. <laughs> Look, look, I don't even know where the where you know how much of the money goes to education, how much of it goes to other things. I don't even I don't I haven't followed that, but I know we have a lottery. The, the lottery's been in, uh, around forever. Uh, well, I don't know why it takes us longer than it does uh, uh, anything else. What is our time frame for passing? What is our time frame for implementation of the bill? Yeah, lawmakers just returned uh, for what's considered their short session. Um, They'll be here probably through July 1st. Uh, So it's going to have to happen in that time period. And and I imagine it'll happen fairly soon, probably once we get into June. Um, Lawmakers have told me that you could be placing your first legal bet by by the middle of football season, maybe October, probably not up and running for kit football season kickoff, but but probably before the season gets you know too too deep into it. Are, are we are we talking about uh, all ways you can? Are we talking about mobile? Are we talking about uh, you know kiosks in arenas or things like that? Uh, like w- where will people be able to do this? 
Yeah, currently sports gambling is legal. It's just only legal in the two physical casinos in the far western part of the state. So, right. so nobody's nobody's driving there to place uh, you know place a single game bet. Probably uh, this will be mobile uh, computer uh, the. You know, the Hurricanes, the Panthers, the Hornets, uh, a couple other facilities would have the ability to build sports lounges yep. in which they'd be able to put kiosks. Um, but largely, we're just talking about betting off your phone, betting off your off your computer, um, probably at the beginning. It's going to take a little while for the for the franchises to get, you know, to get a lounge built. Brian Murphy from WRAL Investigative Reporter here is joining us on the Adam Gold Show. All right, r- real, uh, real quick. My guess is we have a number of companies who operate uh, these these mobile sites, whether it's Caesars or MGM uh, or uh, Ladbrokes, all of this, William Hill. There's so many companies who are in this arena, uh, DraftKings, FanDuel, all of that. Uh, are they just basically waiting at the gate like a horse race? <laughs> so when, uh, when we get go, everybody just bursts out of the gate? What are we waiting on? Yeah, that's exactly. Uh, all of those companies have lobbyists who are, they've hired lobbyists in the state of North Carolina to work on this bill. Uh, there'll be an application period for the Lottery Commission who's, who's, who would be in charge of sports gambling. Uh, they'll review the applications and I imagine they'll give everybody the go-ahead on a specific date. That way, uh, not one company's getting a mm-hmm. two or three week advantage on, on everybody else. All right, final question for Brian Murphy. Have there been estimates of the tax revenue that could be raised, that could be used, and what are we looking at? Yeah, I'm, I'm working on a story about that right now. Um, it's a lot lower than you would think. Uh, no, North, Cal- North Carolina has an 8% tax rate currently. Right. Uh, that may be raised up to something like 14%. Other states are, are much, much higher. Um, according to the state fiscal research division, it, it could generate about 20 to $24 million when it gets up and running. Um, you know, you're talking about a state with a, a budget of $27 billion. Right. Um, and, and half of that money, half of the tax revenue collected would go to a, a major sports attraction fund, which would help <laughs> land a uh, NASCAR all-star race or NBA sure. all-star game or perhaps even a Super Bowl somewhere down the line. Um, so not all of that money would go to the general fund. Brian Murphy, WRAL Sports, invest, WRAL investigative reporter. Uh, appreciate your time, man. Let's do it again. And uh, we obviously, when... Uh, when they decide to uh, to vote on this, and you say the House has to vote, right? It passed the Senate or it passed the House already? It, it passed the Senate. The House still has to vote. All right. When that happens, we got to talk again. No, no problem. Have me on anytime.